wing starts growing, the blood dries up, and then it's, then they have actually no filling in the feather. Does anybody have any questions about this? So you live here full time? Yes, I do. I got asked to move here in 32 years ago to put my show. I had the show in Tampa, Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah. I own 17 birds. Oh. Yes, I love them all. Let me tell you, when I started my business, I wanted to make sure that I started it correct, okay? Because when parrots hatch, to the time they pass away, they are never, ever alone. They live in a flock and with their mate for life. So years ago, we told you, buy this parrot, get this beautiful cage, I'll have a pet for life. It'll be just the joy of your family. And that's the truth. But you put that bird in that cage, and you leave for 10 hours and go to work, the bird goes insane because they're flock birds. They're so social. Even the ones that aren't flock birds, African greys and Amazons, they are with their mate their whole entire life. They are never, ever alone. So what do we do? We lock them up. They go and disappear for 10 hours. Then you come home and wonder why your neighbor is giving you that evil eye. <laughs> because it's squawking all day long. <laughs> then you come into the house and notice his feathers all over the living room floor. That's because the bird's plucking himself because he's so upset. So I believe you have to have double trouble when you own a parrot in your home. So that's what I did. When I raised my family, I raised them in flocks. So I have raised a blue and gold named Obi with Oscar and Miss Pris and Coral and Bobo together. Oh, Just okay. like these two. Ginger was raised with my 25 year old but fell in love with Elvis, who was <laughs> given to me. Okay? I that's the only bird that I didn't hand raise. Okay. He was given to me. These two, they've been together for twenty five years, never hmm. been apart. Oh. So oh, therefore man. They have a pal. Now, yes, granted, some are home right now, but that's okay because in the rainforest, not all of them go get food at one time. Half stay behind and the other <laughs> half go and get food. So this is very common. They know they're coming back. But at nighttime and on their days off, they're, all, they're playing together. They're grooming each other like those two. You see how they were grooming each other? That is a natural behavior they do every single day of their life. If we were to do that, it would take us eight hours a day. And none of us would do that for eight hours a day. So that's why you need to have double trouble. Now, I realize when they're older like me, getting a hand-raised bird is not smart because they live to be 80. But all those people that came home and saw the neighbors giving them the evil eye, well, they ended up getting rid of the bird because the neighborhood complained <laughs> because they were too loud. So they go to rehabs. Believe it or not, there's rehabs all over the world. So you go to one of these rehabs where they have 50 to 100 birds that people have given up because they realize, wow, these guys are a lot of work, you know. Um, they work with the birds to stop them from plucking. They hopefully get them hooked up with another parrot that's in their rehab. So you can go there and pick up two birds, bring them home. They are gonna really keep a close eye on how you handle them and how you house them and take care of them. But it's a great way. It's like going to Humane Society and getting an older cat or dog. So if you ever want a bird when you're older like me and you do travel, that's the way to do it, okay? Young families, that's the way to do it, is to get a hand-raised bird. So the children will be young, you raise it up, and then once you pass away, the children <coughs> will take the bird. When I pass away, all my birds are going to the Bard Zoo in Melbourne, Florida. Beautiful zoo. Right. So I have mine set up. All okay, right. anybody have any questions? Are they chipped or banded? Uh, both. Both? Yep. See, when, when my bird's older, they didn't have chips back then. Yeah. So I'm still, I got a couple that aren't microchipped yet. I'm getting them ready. I got a couple young ones that aren't microchipped yet. Um, so over the years, I've been slowly chipping them. Um, and then I've been trying to take their bands off because they are very dangerous because they get those bands like caught on things and stuff like that. So I still have bands on some of my birds, but the majority of them, the ones that are, I cut them off. But yeah, years ago, we didn't have the clips, chips to me. Yeah. I actually worked at Bush Gardens back in the 70s when they didn't have, they didn't have a clue how to sex. When the laparoscopes came out, and I was part of laparoscoping over 3,000 birds at Bush Gardens to see if they're male or female. Isn't that funny? Because you have to send their blood work in. There's only a couple species of parrots that you can tell. One is the Ecolactus and one is the double yellow head in Amazon, okay? And cockatiels, of course, because the males have the yellow heads, only the grays, and the females don't. Now, on cockatoos, a year and a half, when they're a year and a half old, the male's eyes stay solid black their whole entire life, or the female's eyes, because when they're born, they have black eyes. But when they're a year and a half old to two years, the eyes turn red or, 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 you know, or dull, dull red. That's a female. 
If you come up here, you'll see her eyes are red. You'll also notice that his eyes are real black and her eyes are red. Now, diet is very important in the parrot world. I was, like I said, a dietist in, in the 70s. We did not know what to feed them back then. With all the studies now of what to feed parrots, that's amazing what they have out there. For, you know, and that birds are a lot healthier nowadays than they were years ago when we fed them sunflower seeds and peanuts with just a little bit of fruit. Well, too many sunflower seeds and peanuts are very bad because they have a fat in them they cannot digest, and it actually causes fatty tumors. Also, they are... Um, uh, how do you say it? Easiest way to say it. Has anybody here ever seen a sunflower seed in the shell, raw, sold for human consumption? Yeah, it's Roasted. Yeah. Not raw. When they're raw, they're out of the shell because of the pesticides on the outside. <laughs> so the birds have to go through the shell to get to the seed. It's just not healthy and stuff. So that's another reason why. Now they do have organic sunflower seeds now, but you're not going to find that in a bird food. You're going to find that in a health food store. Yeah. No, they're not going because you have human grown. It's oh, funny. If I buy macadamia nuts to feed my birds in California, and I buy human grade, not animal grade. And they have human grade and animal grade nuts. It's, it's amazing. So pellets is the way to go. It's amazing. Uh, Zupreme, La Fibers, um, Harrisons. Great diets that are made out of zoological companies and veterinarians and stuff. It's like dry dog food. And they dip it in their water and they eat it. And it is great because it's all the whole grains and stuff. But that should only be 30% of their diet. The other 10 should be good oily nuts, macadamia nuts, Brazil nuts, almonds, walnuts. My birds love pecans. Pecans and macadamia nuts are my birds' favorites, okay? And I, I know, I know, I prefer to feed it in the shell. Why? Because when you feed a parrot, they're only going to eat one-fourth of what's in that bowl. The rest of it ends up all over your house. <laughs> That's why they're called the gardeners of the rainforest. There's an article about hyacinth macaws that they studied them in Brazil, where they actually flew miles away from their nighttime place where they sleep and dropped nuts on purpose for future trees in the future. Ooh. Yeah, look up the article. It, it's called Gardeners of the Rainforest, Highest Macaws. If you Google it, you'll find out. So that's why they, they they tear everything out and throw it everywhere and stuff. So because nuts aren't cheap, the funny thing is if you accumulate them and throw them in the freezer, then they just give them a nut or two a day. They have fun tearing that shell off, so hopefully when they get to the nut itself, they'll eat most of it. <laughs> if you just, when you can't get them in the shell and you just give them an all, they're going to notice a lot of it's on the floor. <laughs> yes, you have to crack them for them now. Yeah, the macaws you don't have to, but on the cockatoos, the smaller birds are going to have to crack them. Yeah, yeah, just get a nutcracker and crack them. Same with almonds and pecans. I, yeah, well, no, I on my bigger birds they crack them, but my smaller birds like the gonk and cockatoos, the only nut they can really get into is an almond because they're rough and they can get that beak in there. But you know, it's so sad to watch them trying to get in that nut. So I will crack them, not open them up. I will crack them so they can get their beak in there and open it up better. Because you want them to try to fight for the nut, okay? You don't want to crack it for them and just give them the nut. You just want to lightly crack the shell so it has a cut in it so they can get their beak in there. The smaller birds, all my bigger birds, I just give them the whole nut because you want them to play with it and stuff. Now that's, like I said, should be 10% of their diet. The other 60% of their diet should be whole grains, and fresh fruits and vegetables. You can pretty well feed them just about anything. When it comes to fruits and vegetables, there are a few options, like rhubarb. Avocados are toxic. My birds love apples. I give them apples once a week, but you can't give them the seeds. You live up north, peaches and apricots are cheap, they're not tropical, but birds actually love them. You just can't give them the pits. So if you Google it again, they'll give you a whole list of what you can and cannot feed your birds in the fruit and vegetable world, okay? They have very few taste buds. Yes, very few. That's why, I don't know why, there's something in the wild that's got to be orange that, that tastes like cheese. Because whenever they, I don't know why, whenever they see cheese, orange cheese, not white cheese, my birds go crazy. So I can't figure out what it is in the wild. Yeah. So anyways, any more questions? What's your normal day? Seven o'clock? Uh... Oh, no, I got a great story. He said, what's my normal day? I work in the afternoons and the evenings. 
and I'm going to tell you about birds talking right now. Mm. Over all the years of me yelling at my birds to be quiet, because they get to like at 5, 6 o'clock here sometimes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get up that early because I work in the afternoons and evenings. So do my tenants, because we, it's a tourist industry. Tourists don't get up right and early unless they're going to go out in a boat. <laughs> well, either do we. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to tell you a story now about Obi. Obi, who was raised with Oscar. I don't have to tell my birds to be quiet anymore because over the years of me yelling at my birds, they, my bird, Obi, does it for me now. Now, you have to think about this poor bird that I have beautiful walk-in aviaries that are outside. And this one bird will be sitting here, everything's quiet, and all of a sudden he'll go, Coral will squawk, and he'll go, Coral, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> well, Coral started it, and next thing you know, he's going, Troy, shut up! Bubble, shut up! River, shut up! Coral, did you hear me? Because Coral squawked twice. <laughs> so now he's on the, you hear me. So he's calling names out, because I know they're individual voices. So every time they would squawk, I would yell at them. And, they, and so now Obi yells at him, and finally they're all squawking just to give him a hard time, I guess. I don't know. And he finally goes, ooh, you're in trouble. Every bird shuts up. Because <laughs> they know that's when I'm going to have to climb out of bed and go out my bedroom door and go up to the aviaries and tell them they're all bad. <laughs> and they know I'm going to be upset. So then they shut up till about 9 o'clock. So about 9 o'clock in the morning, I get out of bed. Here's your answer. No, 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 that's when I'm hand-raising them. When they're babies, when they're this big, the size of my thumb, they look like little pterodactyls with no feathers. You have to syringe feed them, don't they? You have to syringe feed them or spoon feed them, and then they slowly get bigger and bigger, then they start to get feathers. When you hand-raise a parrot, that's why they're so hard, because it takes four hours around the clock to feed these guys. So once, once they're weaned, I feed my birds pellets in the morning. In the afternoon, I give them their fruit and their nuts. So tonight when I get home, well tonight, I'm us I usually work on the ships at 7 o'clock, you know, so I get home around 8.30, 9 o'clock, okay? So I have big spotlights, I have big fluorescent lights in my aviaries. When I walk in my aviaries, it's all tile here, and I literally open my cages and walk in, and they're 10 feet above the ground on concrete pillars because I'm on the top of the mountain and stuff. So they're double wired, four inches apart, and the outside, is eight, last eight feet of the aviaries, okay, are not covered but the inside is covered, and they have sleeping shelves on the inside. The reason why I don't cover the outside is they love to hang out in the sun, especially now it's cold up there. It's been in the, uh, well, it's cold for me. It's been <laughs> 59 to 55 at night, and then, you know, 70, high 70s. So they like to stand out in the, because it's cold at night, in the sun and stuff. Um, and when it rains, they love to take baths in the rain. Now I'm going to show you a very healthy, macaw and a very healthy cockatoo on a very good diet, okay? A lot of people do not understand this. Come on, Oscar, it's time to show off again. But all parrots produce a down that they put all over their body. We're going to talk about how macaws do it. Macaw's gland is right here at the base of the tail, okay? And I don't know if you've ever noticed that a macaw will take his beak, hit that, and then go like this, then they'll hit that, and they'll go like this, and they put this down all over their body. If they do not have a healthy diet, they are not going to produce this down, which actually makes birds waterproof. Oh. Is that amazing? Is that amazing? Totally dry. Mm. Without a good diet, they're not going to be dry like that. They're not going to produce that down. That down protects them from staying wet all the time. They live in the rainforest where it's always wet. If they stay wet all the time, they have very weak respiratory systems. Mm. They would not live long. Plus all that nasty sap. I usually like to bring someone up here that's wearing black, but since I can't do that either, watch this. Are you ready for this? Look at this. Oh. You see all that white powder on me? Woo. That's their down. See all that white powder? Mm. That's a healthy cockatoo. Oh. <laughs> now, if you have asthma, or if you have any allergies, or your children have allergies, you never want to own a cockatoo or an afternoon gray parrot because you're going to be breathing that. It's going to be all over your house every day because you keep your windows closed due to heat and AC. I keep I don't ever close my windows unless a hurricane comes. <laughs> That's it. So, but my screens, I got to clean them all the time because my personal pets that live inside. 
the screens just get white from that. Isn't that amazing? Any questions? Are they all uh, egg Yes, they all lay eggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, non-inverts. Non -inverts. Yeah. Any questions? I just want to go back to diet for a second. Oh, sorry. Okay. I really don't know that question because I I have a 38 year old and she's still having babies and stuff like that. Um, it's how do you? Parents have only a certain amount of eggs inside of them, not the eggs they lay, but the the eggs, you know. Um, my friend raises hyacinths, and his quit for, for like five years, didn't have any eggs. So he went ahead and had them checked out to see how many eggs they have inside of them, which you can do. It's, it's a little laparoscopic thing. Um, and he somehow figured it out, and they still had them. So I don't know, and his birds are like 50. Yeah, so I really don't know. It's, it's There's not that many studies on that part of it. People, I don't like big breeders because that's what they breed to. They were mating. The guy is 50 years old, and the little girl is 25, and she just. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn